Welcome back to Starbase Texas, home of SpaceX, two-time back-to-back champion for Best Caribbean Fireworks Show. My name is John. We'll be doing a little bit of a summary of what's been going on, kicking it off with the one that came back. This is Booster 15. It was lifted off of the launch mount after a successful catch. SpaceX getting those boosters caught without seemingly a lot of problems. That's a really interesting effect on there. Um, coming back, catching it on the chopsticks, putting it down. There was even significantly less fire coming out of the booster after it landed this time. But uh, here we go. Having recovered it, we'll send it back. Will it get to refly? Will it not refly? You know what I think they should do? I think they should just stack a booster on top of another booster. And uh, that second booster would probably be more reliable than the V2 ships getting to orbit. But going all the way back to the production site, there is that star factory with its palm trees that may be fle Oh, wow! He had to back up. <laughs> he was not supposed to go that way. See, what that is is a failure in uh, traffic control, though. I don't blame the truck driver there. Like, what do you think? You're going to drive down the road and there's going to be this thing in the road making you turn around? Nah, there should be some flashing lights keeping you from doing that. A little bit of haze happening, but there's Booster 15 getting lifted over into a corner of the Mega Bay onto a processing stand. Guess they're going to do some checkouts and inspections. Back over at the launch mount. This is the first launch mount. Looks like they're removing. Are they putting them back in? They're putting them back in the alignment pins that they use to help uh, make sure they don't ding any Raptor engine bells when they put it into that thing. There's a ship thrust sim that they use to exert force on the bottom of the ship when they're doing certain testing. In fact, here you can see the thrust sim being inserted gently into the bottom of ship 35, here preparing it for some testing. What they'll do is they'll fill up the ship with uh, all the propellants, the cryogenic fluids, get it nice and cold. I guess first they need to roll it out to Massey's, which is what you're seeing here. And uh, when it is chilled out, I guess, uh, they push on it with the thrust sim as if it was Raptors. But it's not Raptors because they tend to stay attached to the back of the... Okay, I'll stop. Whatever, they'll get it fixed at some point. Uh, the thrust sim does seem to stay attached to the back of the ships, usually, uh, while they're doing the testing. Is it? What are those? Star Lake simulators. Star lumps. Star lunks. Sim links, whatever y'all want to call them. I don't, I don't like dumb link myself. I feel like they deserve a little bit more than that. But uh, there's Pad B's launch mount. I continue my conscientious, conscientious objection of using the orbital part of that, even though we keep putting it on the screen. Got some big pipes that they're installing here, it looks like. That pi I guess the, the manifold is starting to come together because we've seen that big uh, water cool plate with all of the holes to let the water run through. There's some more fancy blinds or covers that they put on the ends of these pipes. Insulated pipe? I scroll back and read the label. I didn't actually read the label. What is... Okay, now where are we here? Because at some point, the mural was put up in hasty fashion, hasty fashion, and then it started to fall down, and pieces started to fall off. And then they peeled the entire thing off and, I guess, recoded it, repainted it, put some sort of underlayment down. And I, I guess they're putting it back up? Like, that was some of it being reapplied... Anyways, right, back back over to the launch mount. You can see the booster QD sort of pointing straight at you here. Mary got a great shot looking like directly down the front of it. There's those uh, catch pillows. What were we calling them before? Fig Newton, Steel Newton, whatever they were. Uh, the bumpers or buffers or whatever you have when those chopsticks uh, literally slap the side of the boosters. If you all saw the last booster catch... They really do make contact with the side of the booster. There's nothing uh, dainty about the way that they catch that thing. But, you know, there's a lot of fire. There's a lot of char down on the bottom of the launch mount there. But uh, not looking too terrible, as it turns out. Oh, jeez. If, if, if we go back to that, we'll talk about it. But here, you can see there's a new name in the, uh, the watermark there. Ryan Caton getting a shot sitting on the right side of the plane as they left Starbase. He was flying home and got that little bit of video. Maybe scroll back and see that again if you wonder what Starbase looks, for, looks like from the air if you happen to be on the right side of the plane. There quite literally was the right side of the plane because they were flying anyways. Yeah, that was the right side of the plane. In both senses of the word right. 
Here's some shots over from Massey's again, ship and booster, hanging out over this way. Now there is a good close-up view. Mary got a good close-up of the catch point. Not thinking it's particularly likely that uh, they get to try a catch on the next flight. Uh, maybe they need the starship to actually make it into space or make it into orbit before it comes all the way back around. But big concerns there with overflight of land. You do not want uh, the starship to be coming down and relocating its fireworks show. You need that thing to survive all the way. So let's get a couple good V2 starship flights under our belt before we start having those come back to Brownsville. Got some access hatches open there. Working on the chopsticks. We, we, are we repainting? Are we scraping off rust? What are we doing? It's like a dental cleaning. Does that drill make a noise? I, what did y'all think that person was doing there? Were they, were they, it looked at first like a painting sort of motion, but maybe it wasn't. That brown is really interesting. Is that just dirt? That almost looks like a grease that had dripped on the top of that, and then the dirt blows on it, and the sand sticks to it, and the grease makes it all this disgusting amalgamation of junk. I wonder if that's what we were seeing, and is it related somehow to the cables? Those cables. Whew. I don't know exactly what maintenance steps they take those cables, but the salt water air out there is not a friend to anything that... What? Likes an oxygen? That's what happened when it oxidizes, right? It, like, takes oxygen on and it becomes oxidized or something to that effect. Doing some work here. There was some grinding or welding. Is that just a reinforcement, maybe? Are we attaching that big X or are we detaching the X? Did we just use that? Oh, they were cutting it off because the X went away at the end of the clip. So that must have been uh, temporary for transport or making more room or something like that. Here we had some sling work being done. Part of the crane there? Pretty sure they're just disassembling. See which way it goes. The string now has the the sling now has tension. And there they're taking that part of the crane off, it looks like. Alright. Well, maybe if they return it fast enough they won't owe any late fees on that crane rental. I think that actually is the SpaceX crane. It's painted like the SpaceX crane. We'll see. Maybe they're just uh, reconfiguring the crane for another task. Not exactly sure, but there it is lying down. Look, you can see that crane all across the bottom of the uh, the screen there. Pad B. A lot of work has been happening. If you scroll back, you can see that frame that they put in, the bottom part of the gantry there, a little A-shaped frame in the extreme left part of your screen. There it is. Look at that. Speak of the... Cylon Resurrection Ship. We've made that joke before, but it's sort of the same shape, and it doesn't have cladding on it yet, so it's got that hollow appearance. But uh, working on this, and being, it's going to be really interesting to see how this shapes up out there. Are we going to have uh, parts of the booster quick disconnect here? Is the launch pad going to roll up next to that thing? And then infrastructure, piping and stuff, is going to get up to the level of the booster via that fixed structure? instead of being attached to maybe what might be a moving launch pad? I guess we'll find out. For all the Yabba Dabba Doo fans here, we're back over at the Brontosaurus rib nay flame, direct, de flame deflectors, I guess we were calling them. No, that's not, that's not what we're calling them. That's what they actually are. Um, they're looking much less Brontosaurus ribby these days because they, they're actually connected together and stuff. There goes the mural, the parking garage mural. At one point, I was I was driving through Starbase when we were out there for the last flight, and the entire mural was down except for half of a ship on the very right side. And I had this picture of, like, the Mars program we were promised and the Mars program we have so far. Uh, but there they go painting that mural again. There is the big traveling block. Got some scaffolding around it. That looks like a, like a tool retention or something. There's like a net. It's probably not for birds. It's probably so you don't drop a tool on that guy down below. Didn't see any toe plates installed there. This looks like the second tower because it's nice and shiny and well painted. Significantly less rusted than the original tower. But just good to get some shots. But yeah, there you go. Look, look how nice that tower looks. That looks like a tower that has not had a rocket take off right next to it yet. The orbital tank farm. It's the only sort of tank farm we have over here these days. Well, I guess you could argue that maybe that's not entirely accurate, but they're trying for it. 
that sort of sling working in the background there. Just moving the big pumps, the red uh, actuators that you see here. There's some more rear pumping. We get Adrian over here to uh, commentate how to pronounce that correctly, I guess. But just significant work continuing on. Bringing all these parts in as they continue to build out the infrastructure for not just one, but two launch pads over there at the launch site. Man, that excavator looks like fun. Was he just opening it more? Is he parking it for lunch? I feel like he should grab some concrete with those things. I've So, so many people have reached out to me and sent me information on these uh, red actuators you see. And I haven't gotten a completely authoritative answer, like something that matches exactly. There's a lot of stuff that looks really close to it. And more than one person telling me that that red is the trademark sort of color of the company that makes those components. But I, I haven't gotten the label that says that that's what those are. So I don't want to say, oh, yeah, those are company XYZ uh, actuators. You can tell because of the way that they are. They always paint them that red color just because just it's not confirmed. I don't want to act like that's the truth if I don't actually know that that's the truth. I know. Not a lot of stuff works that way these days. But uh, here you go. Finishing off with some testing over there at Massey's. You can see the atmosphere freezing to the side of the ship. We'll see if we get some other commentary. Remember, we do other languages as well. Usually, I know Adrian's on the road. I think Alex might get in here. But for now, that's going to be the end of your Starbase summary as we watch the preparations and see when we're going to get another launch out of Starbase. My name's John. Thanks, for everybody, for making it happen. And we will see you nerds later.